All right, all right. Well, I've got a uh, little project to do today. It's that time of the year, and I have some chores to do with the chainsaws. And uh, I got a couple of them out here. Um, two of them I know they're pretty sharp. This was dull at the end of last year, never used it. Uh, it Husqvarna 136, pretty handy little saw. And I'm actually gonna try a electric one I ran across. Um, I know it works. The guy just said it just did not cut worth a damn. And when I looked at it, um, I got it in, cleaned it off, and then I noticed that uh, that he had the chain on backwards. So, but it was still dull. So I'm going to sharpen that up and give this a try today. Let me show you what I do. So there's actually uh, quite a few different tools and methods for for sharpening uh, these chainsaw chains. Uh, some are, are handheld files, some are uh, electric handheld, some are tabletop, uh, grinding wheels, just all kinds of stuff. And I guess it really depends on, on your situation, right? Um, I have always used uh, the tried and true uh, the round files and the fixtures uh, and that's because a lot of times especially when I was growing up I was out out in the field I'm out there in the woods cutting stuff and if I need a quick uh, sharpening uh, just to keep things rolling along uh, then I can use this where I'm wherever I'm at in, out in the field right and if I'm at home I have a Dremel that has a little fixture. Um, that way you can hold it at the angle it's, and it's a done deal. But even with this, you know, this might take five minutes, this might take eight to ten minutes. So it's not that, it's not a whole lot of time that you have to waste on this and it's well worth the effort. And if you want to see uh, some really good reviews on a, on a good assortment, uh, I'll include the link, the guy that does the uh, project farm, and he did uh, a review on on different sharpening uh, methods and tools, and and it goes along with what I'm saying. It just depends on where you're at and what you need to do. And I'm still sold on these. I'm gonna carry these around whenever I'm out in the woods, you know, and it needs sharpening. But I also wanted to try the, what is it, the two-in-one? from steel. I have yet to try that. Uh, one of these days I'll get one. It looks like a pretty good tool and, uh, and it actually does the two-in-one. It kind of licks everything in, in, in one stroke, right? And I'll show you what I mean. So this little kit is pretty common. Um, you can see I've already have it positioned here but you have the different sizes, the round files and these two jigs here. and. Comes in a roller cape. This is a Woodsman, Woodsman Tough. Uh, Oregon makes them, of course, and uh, you can find them anywhere, and they're fairly cheap. And what you do, let me loosen this up. Yeah. So there's the round file, and this one I had already looked at the at the size I need and these are perfect for both both of these chains they come in different sizes to fit whatever pitch um, of chain you're using but basically you just slide this in tighten it up Then you need to position, you can see the angles that are, that are marked off, 30 degrees, there's 30, there's 35, 25, in this case it calls for a 30 degree angle. 
So here's the angle. Let me, uh, can you see that there? You can see the marks going this way, and that's what I want to keep uh, lined up parallel with your blade there. And then you just go back and forth. see it's already uh, getting sharp there so you'll skip this one go to this one you get the same angle and I guess your accuracy is just you're free handing it but as long as you keep uh, that mark parallel to the blade you know you'll be doing fine there are other uh, there are other sharpeners where you actually attach the jig and it keeps it lined up just perfectly. Uh, it takes a little while to set up, but once it's done, uh, it's very easy to do, just like I'm doing here, but you get a lot of precision out of it. And, uh, and they do a really, really good job, to tell you the truth. Um, let's go this way. Yeah, so that's about it for uh, for sharpening that blade. You do the same thing with this one. You can see it's the, it needs the same uh, same method. Now with this, this is a depth gauge. So and you have a flat file here, and what you do. I believe this is uh, .025 at the ends, yeah, they're labeled here, and then the .35, .30 along this edge. So what you do, you lay it over and then run your file across there. So you don't want the blade to be protruding out of this. Um, and you'll see a lot of times where, yeah, the little nicks here sometimes if this piece is protruding too far up well then your blades not going to be engaging with with the with your wood with your medium right so that's that's the reason for the depth gauge now that steel two and one it looks like uh, from what I've seen you lay it down and you go back and forth with uh, with the file like that, but it has a, a depth gauge already attached to this. So while you're filing it down, it's it's checking the depth as you go. So it's like I said, it, it's two and one. You're killing two two birds with one stone. And uh, yeah, one of these days I'm going to try that. But uh, I've had these forever. This is actually my newest one. I think I have an old. Was it a craftsman, probably, that uh, that has disappeared over the years? But uh, but that's about it. With uh, let me show you the Dremel. If I'm in the garage or a shop, you can see this Dremel has a just a little fixture on there with the grinding wheel, the grinding stone, and and you do the same thing. You line this up. Here's your 30 degree mark. You line that up and uh, just butt up against it while it's running. Just boom, boom, boom. So, so with this you can concentrate instead of going back and forth and a lot of movement. You just, uh, you can make sure, just pay close attention to the 30 degree mark. Just hold it down, sharpen it up. and save you a few minutes right and I usually use this when I'm in the garage or in the in the house somewhere but I use this out in the field you know and nine times out of ten this is still my go-to sharpener so I'm just gonna finish off both of these it'll probably take me about ten minutes per per saw so no big deal yeah, so that's about it. It's it's a 
it's an easy job. It's well worth the effort when you're out there cutting. You can actually uh, save you a lot of time and, and heartache if you just keep your, your blade sharp. And like I said, there's many other different ways, uh, different tools and different files and stuff to use. Just depends on your situation. And, uh, and look online. I did the Project Farm. Uh, he did a great review. Um, what else? That Steel 2-in-1, I believe, uh, Steve Small Engine Saloon did a pretty good uh, uh, review on it. And hopefully I'll be able to get one myself. You know, I want to test it out myself and, and see how good it works. Um, I guess that'll go on my wish list one of these days. But, uh, but that's it. Just take care of your, your blades. Keep them sharp. And uh, you can use them up until you have to replace them. You know, just don't go out and buy a new chain right just right off the bat. Just get you a cheap method of uh, uh, preferred method of sharpening the the chains and uh, make them last. So that's about it. Yeah. So I'll include links to these other reviews I saw. I'm going to finish these off. So once again, be sure to like subscribe and watch for my next video.